Horseflies is a very interesting colloquial name referring to certain flying, blood-sucking and extremely disliked Polish insects. Let's take a closer look at them. What a horsefly is and what it looks like I think I don't need to explain to anyone, but I will explain it anyway. Because due to differences in naming and language in various regions of Poland, many different insects are called horseflies, starting from gadflies through deerflies all the way to botflies. In this video I will tell you what the so-called horsefly looks like and how it functions from a taxonomic and biological point of view. And as is usually the case with native fauna, to give you a tangible example of what such a fly looks like, you have to go out and look for it. So it's time for a trip. This Let's go. Today we have beautiful sunny, potentially pre-storm weather. So these are ideal conditions to look for horseflies or other gadflies. No. The thing with them is quite simple. Because basically you don't even have to look for them. Since in most cases, unfortunately for us, they find us. Great, we're here. But it's really windy, so there's no chance anything will stick. We're heading over there and maybe we'll manage to conjure up a horsefly or something. We'll see. Damn, there was one, it actually landed on me, right on my hand, and then it flew away. We'll just wait until it lands again, which it probably will. We've got it, my friends. I ventured deeper into the forest and encountered a small stream. Swarms of horseflies immediately attacked me, and one is still flying around. And I actually managed to catch one of those flies right here in the center of the frame, see? There it is, my friends, a complete success. I also managed to catch a regular horsefly from the Tabanus genus, and now let's take it and get out of here, because I'm being attacked from all sides by pretty much everything that bites and sucks blood, so let's head back. And as a shameless interruption, I'd just like to remind you that my clothing store still has plenty of tank tops, t-shirts, hoodies, and even shorts available. I'll leave the link to the store in the video description, and now let's get back to horseflies. The trip paid off. And in this way, I brought a few horseflies and two species of gadflies back to my apartment. What's the difference between one and the other? I'll explain that in a moment. And I think we should start with the very basics, which is to say what exactly a horsefly is. Well, we know it's a fly, and in fact all these insects belong to the order Diptera, so they're cousins of mosquitoes, hoverflies and houseflies. The term horsefly, as I already mentioned, is quite colloquial. In various regions of Poland and families, including my own, the term horsefly is used to refer to different types of insects. However, if we look a bit deeper into all this terminology, it turns out that horsefly is a name that has been attached to only one type of insect. What you see on the screen, that greyish insect with incredibly colorful eyes, that's the horsefly, which is a fly belonging to the genus Eusnica, or in Latin, Hematopota. And before I tell you a bit more about these exceptionally annoying, persistent and blood-sucking insects, let's introduce their cousins, all those other insects that are often mistakenly, although since it's a colloquial name, maybe not mistakenly, called horseflies. First we'll discuss botflies, followed by gadflies and deerflies. Finally we'll cover Yushnika. I think some of you might remember those rather horrible and drastic scenes where animals are practically eaten alive by those white larvae. Those are botfly larvae. Botflies, or more precisely the family Oustridae, are a completely different family of insects than horseflies, which are actually the main subject of today's episode because the rain horsefly belongs to the horsefly family. In contrast, botflies are entirely distinct. Yes, they are also hematophagous, meaning they also feed on blood, just like for example deer keds, which I made a video about, or mosquitoes, which I also covered in a video. So these are rather unfriendly creatures that can potentially transmit various diseases. From my experience, and also from the opinions of other people who study flies, it turns out that horseflies practically don't attack humans. That means they are strictly focused on cattle or other large mammals, while humans and human blood are, let's say, a weak target for them, and in fact, for example, I've never been attacked by a horsefly in my life. A real horsefly, exactly what you see on the screen. These small fuzzy flies are essentially regular flies that also drink blood. They fly around cattle and annoy them. Let's move on and go to the second family, next to the horseflies, which probably includes the most blood-sucking species. And it's in this family that you find all those big, buzzing, flying flies. They include horseflies, and they include a whole lot of different species spread practically all over the world. 
Most horseflies are found in the tropics. Poland has several dozen species in its fauna. And we also have these horseflies. They fly around, especially on warm days, and sometimes they irritate or attack us. Because I bet that when some of you heard the word bonk, you either thought of human or non-human gases, or you thought of this. So, about those big, chubby, fluffy bees, which according to some scientists shouldn't be able to fly because their mass is too large compared to the surface area of their wings. My dear friends, these fluffy creatures, which are bees because they all belong to the group of bees, are bumblebees, not bonki. Bonki are actually flies, while bumblebees, our pollinating friends, the bombus species, are not entirely friends, as some bombus species, like cuckoo bumblebees, parasitize other bumblebees, making them less nice. Bumblebees are calm creatures that fly from flower to flower, pollinating. They're useful and won't harm us if we don't harm them, although they could, as they do have a stinger being stinging insects. I mean, only the females, but they do have a stinger. But my friends, these are not bonky. And I know it's hard to get rid of such terminology that we've used since childhood, but I'm just presenting how it looks from a taxonomic point of view. Let's return to the Tabanidae family, also known as horseflies or bonki in Polish. As I mentioned, in Poland we have several dozen species, and among all these species, there are three of the most popular genera that are often identified as horseflies. The genus Tabanus, called Bonk in Polish, includes the Sudeten horsefly, cattle horsefly, and other species of horseflies. There are a lot of these horseflies, they're very hard to tell apart, and horseflies are the largest of the flies. That means if a big buzzing insect flies by you, and often they circle around their victim, in this case around us, it's very likely that it's a horsefly. Horsefly stings are especially unpleasant because they're very painful and the wounds heal slowly. For example, my mom was once bitten by a big horsefly and it took a long time to heal. And during today's trip, which you saw, I managed to catch two species of horseflies that, at first glance, you can tell are different. For example, they have different patterns on their eyes. Horseflies' eyes are a fascinating topic that I'll discuss further in a moment. Horseflies of the genus Tabanus are, I think, the kind of flies that we are probably most afraid of. If something like that flies past us, buzzing mercilessly, it's big and can potentially sting us very painfully, well, there's nothing to do but be afraid. The second extremely popular, and by the way very beautiful type, which is often confused with the horsefly, are deer flies. And deer flies, that is, the Chrysops genus, are a type of quite colorfully, let's say marked flies, because they are yellow and black with green eyes. These flies also eagerly feed on human blood, they also bite quite painfully, and we can very often encounter them near water. And this happens because their larvae develop in water, and this is what deer flies look like. These are small flies, much smaller than some horseflies, which usually have black and yellow coloring with characteristic spots on their wings. And what I really like about them, yes, I know I'm weird, are their eyes, which in the Chrysops genus are bright green with single dots. And if we take a close look at such a Chrysops, just not when it's feeding on our blood, we'll see that its eyes are incredibly colored. The third type and main characters of today's episode are horseflies, which belong to the Chrysops genus. And among all the Tabanidae, it seems to me that it's the Chrysops that are the most popular, the most common, or at least on today's trip, it was mostly Chrysops that attacked me. You might ask where the name rain horsefly comes from, and it comes from the fact that when there's stormy weather, when it's stuffy, humid, and hot, the Chrysops become incredibly active. And then, if you go to the forest or a meadow, you'll simply be attacked by a swarm of these chrysops because they're a bit like weather-sensitive creatures. If rain is approaching, they get excited and are very eager to bite. And the chrysops stands out among other horseflies by having a more triangular-shaped head, which you can see now. It stands out with its eyes, which here have very distinctive serrated stripes. Besides that, it stands out with a much more elongated body shape compared to other horseflies, which is greyish-brown in color, plus it also has spotted wings. And just like in other flies, the body is divided into three parts, so there's the head with those colorful eyes. The thorax is where the wings and three pairs of walking legs grow from. And we have the segmented abdomen, which is at the end. So that's how the naming works, and this is the horsefly. And now I leave it up to you to decide whether you'll use the terminology that's used not so much by scientists, but by people who know a bit about insects, or if you'll stick to your own naming and habits and keep calling all the insects I've discussed horseflies. The main purpose of this video is not to lecture you, as that's a secondary issue. 
The purpose of this video is to introduce you to flies from the Tabanidae family. So now let's move on to their features and some interesting facts. Feature number one. If you think that these horse flies, for example, land on a cow, then lay eggs there, and then the larvae eat the cow from the outside and inside, you're very much mistaken. The interesting fact is that the larvae of different horse flies develop in very different ways, but not on animals. These larvae can be predators and hunt in water. They can develop, for example, in tree hollows, or they can develop in the soil. So all those examples of drastic different scenes where larvae live on living animals, those are not horsefly larvae. Fun fact number two, which might answer your question about why in some of the shots in this film, I, as if nothing happened, am holding these different horseflies on my hands and even let them lick, this time it's honey, from my finger. And the answer to that is quite surprising. Well, if you catch a horsefly or if you catch a horsefly and bring it indoors, I have no idea why this happens, but they lose the ability to bite people. That means if I now put an open vial with these insects against my skin, they won't bite me. Honestly, I don't know why this occurs, but that's the reality. Feature 3. Horseflies can transmit various dangerous diseases, including tularemia and anthrax. This happens for a very simple reason. Imagine a scene like this. In a pasture, a cow is surrounded by various flies, including horseflies. The cow constantly swats away horseflies with her tail to avoid being bitten. And I definitely don't want you to imagine this from a human or a cow's perspective, but from the perspective of a horsefly. Well, in order to feed on blood, it really has to work hard. First, it has to fly around a lot, then it has to land, then it has to use its legs to part the fur, and finally it has to pierce the skin and lick up the blood. So that's a lot of work, and because of all the swatting, this job gets even harder. That's why these horseflies fly from animal to animal, taking a little blood here and a little blood there, and because they have so many hosts, jumping from one animal to another, diseases have perfect conditions to spread. Fun fact number four, as mentioned earlier, they are hematophages, meaning they feed on blood. But only the females feed on blood, just like it's the case with mosquitoes. And what's more, I'll give you a tangible example here, that blood is not the only fluid that these blood-sucking females can feed on. Because what you're seeing now is a blood-sucking female horsefly, calmly sipping honey as if it's nothing unusual. And that's quite interesting because the females can feed on pollen, nectar and blood, but it's the blood they need for their development. Without blood, they won't lay eggs, which is why they drink blood, and the rest of their diet is supplemented with other fluids. So what do the males do? Well, male horseflies are completely harmless. They have a totally different mouth structure, and male horseflies feed exclusively on flower nectar. So actually, they're useful because it turns out they're pollinators. So you're asking how to tell a male from a female. Here comes fun fact number five. To distinguish male and female bumblebees, aside from the fact that bumblebees seen on flowers are 99% likely to be male, simply look at their head. If we look at the heads of the male and female, we'll notice a pretty clear difference. The eyes of the males meet at the top of the head. In females, however, there's a clear separation between the eyes. They're simply divided into a right eye and a left eye. In males, it's just a seam, and it almost looks like the whole head is made up of eyes. Trait number six. Have you ever wondered how horseflies cut through skin? If you have, great, I'll show you. If not, consider it. Take a look at this. What you're seeing now is a pretty big close-up, in this case of a horsefly, also known as a tabanid. And besides the various strange elements that make up this mouth part, you can see a kind of brown little dagger there. And that little dagger is actually used for cutting the skin. Here, on the other hand, is another example. This is actually the head of one of those horseflies that happened to bite me. This is a brown, fairly long little dagger, which is made up of several parts, including mandibles, the labrum, and a few others. And that's exactly what horseflies use to cut through the skin. And once they cut through the skin, which unfortunately is quite painful for us, they introduce a drop of saliva into the wound, which stops the blood from clotting, ergo, which allows them to lap it up. And if we don't shoo the horsefly away in time, it can suck up to 0.2 ml of our blood. So it's quite easy to calculate how many horseflies it would take to suck out all our blood. I'll leave the math to you. Last fun fact, number seven if I'm counting correctly, horseflies rely, among other things, on their eyesight. Well, that's what those big eyes are for. They're very pretty, they're colorful, and in some species they're really amazing. Using their eyesight, and I suspect also thermoreceptors, they track their prey. And here's an interesting fact. If we dress in dark colors, there's a higher chance we'll get attacked, because they seem to like dark, large, moving objects. 
And here's another story. If you go to the edge of a forest on a very warm, humid, hot day in a dark car, that car will also immediately be surrounded and attacked by lots of horseflies. I've experienced this phenomenon multiple times as a kid when I went to the meadow with my grandfather. Usually a swarm of these flies would appear, but after exiting the car it wasn't so bad. They didn't attack the person, only the car since it was hot and warm. And with that automotive note I'll leave you. Please let me know what you call horse flies, deer flies, gad flies and other similar biting blood sucking creatures in your regions. I hope you liked the episode, leave a comment if you did and see you next time. Bye!